power of water has been harnessed for centuries, but it was not until the late 1800s that water was used to generate hydroelectric power. Initially, hydroelectricity was generated by the force of water falling onto a rotating water wheel. Today, the majority of the world's hydroelectric power comes from huge power stations located within dams. These power stations produce electricity by using the force of water flowing through the dam to drive huge turbines and generators. There are many advantages to hydroelectric power. Namely, it's a renewable energy source. Hydroelectric power also does not require fossil fuels to operate. Hydroelectric plants have low operational and maintenance costs. And the reservoirs upstream of the dam provide irrigation for agriculture and outdoor recreational opportunities. Despite these advantages, there are many negative impacts due to the construction of the dam. These impacts include a lack of sediment deposition below the dam, changes in water temperature, and a buildup of silt behind the dam. The classic example of the environmental impact on a dammed river is located within the Grand Canyon. Once a free-flowing body of water, this section of the Colorado River has been dammed for over 50 years, and the environmental impacts since then have been significant. When I first started down here, there were beaches that went for half a mile. You see beautiful sand beaches for half a mile going clear down around the corner. I thought it was the single most spectacular part of the Grand Canyon was the beaches. But in the mid-80s, when the reservoir was full, they ran it in such a manner so it was primarily all about hydroelectric uh, power. And it would create these huge cut banks on the beaches. When we came down the river, the sand would just uh, cave in all day long. It was unbelievable. They destroyed... I would say 80% of all the beaches in the Grand Canyon. Another effect of the dam has been on water temperature. The temperature of the water has changed radically. It uh, went from a summer temperature of somewhere in the mid-70s to about 52 degrees. And so the devastation to the endangered species that were found in the Colorado Corridor, uh, they basically had to go to the side tributaries where there was still warm water to survive. Sediment upstream of the dam is also becoming a problem. When you uh, take a river system and dam it, the water loses current. Therefore, uh, the sediments that are suspended uh, will fall out and they settle somewhere. And uh, eventually Lake Powell, as well as Mead, Parker, Davis, Imperial Dams that are down below, all of these lakes will eventually silt in. Maybe not during our lifetimes, but uh, one thing's for sure, we're handing generations beyond us uh, uh, a definite problem to deal with. And so, as we consider building new dams for hydroelectric power, it's important to understand the drawbacks associated with this energy source.